This video is sponsored by Motion VFX. What is going on everyone? My name is Jason and this is the iPhone 11 long-term review. Now, if it hasn't been made abundantly clear with all the reviews that are out there and the sheer volume of phones sold, the iPhone 11 is pretty freaking great. Apple really hit a home run with this particular iPhone, and to me, it's still the best bang for your buck device that's available today. Now, in case you're still on the fence and you're not yet committed to pick one up for yourself, I thought I'd put together a long-term review of the iPhone 11 as the new iPhone 12s are getting ready for their big debut and focus in on three specific components of this phone that still makes this an outstanding buy even today. Now, this isn't gonna be a comprehensive review of the iPhone 11. If you're looking for that, I'll throw the ones that I put together in the description below. This video is gonna be more focused on my long-term perspective and my own experience over time. And quick question for you guys. If you were to give a recommendation to like a buddy or something, would you tell them to jump on the iPhone 11 now? Or would you have them wait a little bit for the much anticipated iPhone 12? Curious to get your thoughts. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Okay, so the first major component that I wanna talk about with the iPhone 11 is the physical design. Despite not being the top tier iPhone, Apple still ensured that the 11 would be built like a flagship. And even after 10 months of putting this phone through the ringer, it still looks and feels great. Yes, the frame is aluminum and not stainless steel like it's older brothers, but the build quality on the 11 is so well executed, there's no doubt that the phone comes off super premium in the hand. And even with all the other new phones that have come out since the 11 launched, it's still to me an extremely well put together phone. Now I've said this before, but I've been really impressed over time with how the bright colors of the iPhone 11 haven't lost their luster over time. Not only has my product red iPhone 11 held up physically, I still love the way it looks. It hasn't gotten old to me at all, which honestly I was concerned about when I was first picking up the phone. The red still comes off vibrant and well-finished, absolutely no fading or discoloration whatsoever. Given how bright and flashy this is, that's quite an accomplishment. Now, another aspect of the physical design that I've really come to appreciate over time with the iPhone 11 is the size. It's right in that sweet spot between the regular iPhone 11 Pro and the Pro Max, giving you a solid amount of screen real estate without the phone feeling overwhelmingly large or bulky to carry around. It's a great size for consuming content while still comfortable for writing messages or emails. It's really the best of both worlds. Overall, the physical design and form factor of the iPhone 11 has aged well over time. And even with the newer iPhones right on the horizon, it's still a phone that most will thoroughly enjoy well into the future. Okay, next, I wanna talk about the iPhone 11's we interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Hey there, I hope that you're enjoying the video. I wanna take a quick second to talk about today's video sponsor, Motion VFX. Now, a very common question that I get from you guys all the time in the comments is, Jason, man, how do you edit your videos with all of those cool effects? Like those title screens that just pop out of nowhere? Or dude, those dynamic animations? And man, those trackable callouts, how in the world do you do that? I almost feel embarrassed to say this because I think there's some weird perception out there that I'm some sort of master video producer when I'm very much not. Because when you edit on Final Cut Pro like I do, all the visual effects and motion graphics you just saw are super easy to get onto your videos using Motion VFX plugins. Now, all the effects that I just showed you are actually part of an amazing mBundle vlogger toolkit that Motion VFX offers, which is a package of seven extremely useful motion plugin suites for YouTubers like myself. And to illustrate just how easy this is, when I do my standard YouTube call to action to please like this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and to hit that bell notification so you can stay up to date with all of my reviews. This crazy animation that you see going on with what looks like the video being embedded into a YouTube browser, you would think that it requires a very advanced video producer to put something like that together, right? Dude, let me show you how easy this is. So we're gonna jump into Final Cut Pro. This is the original clip on my timeline here. No effects added, just a plain boring clip. All I have to do is go here to my title generators where I've already downloaded the M2 Uber 2 plugin from Motion VFX. I'm gonna scroll down to the subscribe section and use this graphic called Player. And dude, check this out. I literally just drag it down to my timeline. I could adjust the length by just clicking and dragging. And once I have it positioned the way I want, let's play it back. Boom, check it out. How easy is that? Now that's just one tiny example of what's included in this vlogger bundle. With this toolkit, you can create professional intros using your own logos, add dynamic feature animations if you do things like product reviews, and it also gives you awesome tools to help create video content on other social media platforms. Motion VFX has hundreds of different plugins to choose from, and it's by far the easiest and fastest way to take your production value from a zero to a hundred. If you guys wanna check out their mBundle vlogger toolkit or any of their other amazing plugins, I'll leave a link in the description below. So yeah, for all of you who thought that I was spending hours messing around with keyframes or making these motion graphics myself, no way, dude. I don't know how to do any of that. So thank God for motion VFX. Okay, let's get you back to that video. 
Okay, next, I wanna talk about the iPhone 11's long-term performance. Now, with this phone being equipped with the outstanding A13 Bionic chip, it's no surprise at all that this phone is still exceptionally fast. You have no hiccups in day-to-day -day use, navigating around the UI, gaming is buttery smooth and really entertaining on this phone, and there really doesn't seem to have been any noticeable slowdown whatsoever, even after a handful of software updates. Now, that's almost to be expected at this point. What most people likely have questions about when it comes to performance on the iPhone 11 is probably about its display. That less than 1080p LCD display that basically makes this phone a non-starter for a lot of people out there. Now, I'll be completely honest, after using this phone for 10 months, I've had zero complaints with the display, straight up. Is it the best display ever on a phone? No, of course not. But does the lack of resolution or it not being an OLED noticeably hurt my user experience? No, it really doesn't. The display is still bright, content comes off sharp, and still very enjoyable in my opinion. And after using this phone for a while now, what I get in terms of cost savings for having a display like this is totally worth it to me. Now I know there are some folks out there that'll never be convinced, but for most, the underwhelming display on paper is quite different from what you'll actually experience. And overall, I think it performs pretty great. Okay, the last area of performance that I wanna to touch on with the iPhone 11 is the battery life. So far, the battery life has been great. It gets me through a full day of heavy use without any issues. And I love that it supports wireless and quick charging. They're both super handy features. And even after almost a year, my battery health is still at 98%. The low power display and the larger battery size that can fit into this phone's body all help to make the battery life nothing you'll need to stress about when using the iPhone 11, and it stood the test of time. Okay, the last thing and probably the most important part of the iPhone 11 that I wanna talk about are its cameras. So back when I first got my hands on this phone, it was immediately clear that the cameras are not only the best on any iPhone to date, they made for a solid contender for best camera suite on any smartphone, period. And I have to say, after using this phone for months now, that sentiment hasn't changed. So starting off with the front-facing camera, the 12 megapixel sensor continues to do an outstanding job with selfies, dynamic range is excellent as it can take advantage of next generation smart HDR, and having the time to compare the image quality with other top contenders, I have to say that the selfies coming out of the iPhone 11 are some of the most accurate out there. The colors are true to life, and they're less artificially processed in comparison to competitors. So you don't have any aggressive face smoothing or beautifying right out of the camera, and the pictures as a whole come off a bit warmer and more organic. The portrait mode selfies come out great as well, there's been significant improvements made to Apple's edge detection, and the fact that you could shoot 4K video at 24, 30, or 60 FPS on the front facing camera is not only beastly, it's class leading in terms of quality. Now it only gets better with the cameras on the rear. Apple deciding to go with the ultra wide instead of the zoom has proven to be way more useful and a smarter direction. And I personally love using the wide angle lens. The color matching with the main camera is well executed and you can get some incredible looking images at this focal length. The primary camera continues to produce some of the best still images coming off any smartphone to date. Everything is sharp, colors are punchy but come off natural, dynamic range is fantastic, and Apple's investments into their image processing advancements have really paid off. And there's really no debate here. The iPhone 11's ability to shoot 4K video continues to be unchallenged, as the footage you're able to capture with this phone is nothing short of incredible. Everything from the picture quality to the quick and smooth dual pixel autofocus, no other phone is even close in this category, which is pretty dang impressive. Overall, the cameras continue to deliver best-in-class quality over time, and even when looking at the newer phones that have come out since the iPhone 11 dropped, you'll have a hard time arguing that any are better or even on the same level when it comes to cameras. So the iPhone 11 has really stood the test of time, and to me, it's still the iPhone that I would most recommend to anyone, even today. Now, a big factor that plays into all three of the components that I just covered is the price. The $699 price tag to me really makes this one of the most value-packed iPhones ever produced. It's extremely well-made, feature-rich, and it's a bona fide flagship device. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. But with this being August, the real question is, should you just wait for the iPhone 12? Now, my initial answer would be yes, if you could. If you've waited this long, I would personally thug it out a few more months just to see what the iPhone 12 is all about. It could very well be a much better phone, and if anything, the iPhone 11 will likely see a price drop at that point. But if you just can't wait and you're like frothing at the mouth for an iPhone 11, I can say with confidence that you'll probably very much enjoy the phone and won't have any regrets. But hey, that's just me, and I want to know what you guys think. Do any of you have the iPhone 11? Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of the phone, and whether or not you would recommend it now after it's been out for a while. Okay, that's about it for this review. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you guys find it useful, it really helps me out. If you guys have any questions about the iPhone 11, leave them down in the comments, and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.